Hello everyone and welcome back to the intro algebra video lectures. Today we are going to be covering a very important topic in algebra called order of operations. So before we get into order of operations, we need to talk about one last mathematical operation that we haven't really talked about in this class yet, and that is exponents. So exponents are a condensed way of writing repeated multiplication. So for example, if you have the number 3 times itself 5 times, you can condense this and write it as 3 to the 5th power. So 3 to the 5th power is called an exponential, or we can also say that it is written in exponential form. So an exponential is any expression that contains an exponent. So the exponent is a number that indicates the number of times that another number, which is called a base, is used as a factor. So basically, exponents are a way of writing repeated multiplication. And there are two main parts to an exponential expression. We have the base, which is the number that is being multiplied by itself. And we have the exponent, which is the number of times that that base is being multiplied by itself. So 2 to the fourth power is 2 times itself 4 times. So you can also write this as the repeated multiplication as the base 2 times itself 4 times. So the base is what is being multiplied. The exponent is the number of times it is being multiplied by itself. Now, exponents, while it is related to multiplication, is not the same as just straight up multiplication. These are very different expressions, and I see a lot of people making this mistake, so don't make this mistake. 2 to the fourth power is the same as 2 times itself 4 times. And if you were to do 2 times itself 4 times, you know, 2 times, four, two, times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. So 2 to the fourth power is equal to 16. That is very different than just multiplying 2 times 4, which is just 8. So remember, exponents are repeated multiplication, not just regular straight-up multiplication. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate each of these exponential expressions without a calculator. And what we're going to do is remember that exponents are repeated multiplication. Now I know that repeated multiplication, the numbers can get very large very quickly, so I'm only really holding you responsible for knowing some of the basic ones without a calculator. And a lot of the really basic ones are very easy to do without a calculator. For example, 2 to the third power. This is the same as the number 2 times itself 3 times. So we're going to write this as 2 times itself 3 times. And then we're going to multiply from left to right. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Same thing with 3 to the third power. We're going to take the number 3 and we're going to uh, write it as repeated multiplication. We're going to multiply 3 by itself 3 times. So this is the same as 3 times 3 times 3. And then I'm going to multiply this in the order from left to right. So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And especially squaring. Raising something to the power of 2 is also called squaring it. So you can read this as 4 to the second power, or you could read this as 4 squared. In either case, this is the number 4 that is being multiplied by itself 2 times. So 4 times 4 gives you 16. Same thing with 5 squared. This is the same as the number 5 times itself 2 times, which is going to give us 25. 10 squared is the same as 10 times 10, which is 100. 2 squared is the same as 2 times 2, which is 4. 3 squared is the same as 3 times 3, which is 9. 2 to the 4th, we've already done a couple of times. 2 times itself 4 times is 16. 6 to the second power is the same as 6 times 6, which is 36. And then 7 squared is the same as 7 times 7, which is 49. Now, with negatives, you might remember that in the last video, we covered how a negative number times another negative number is always a positive number. So when the signs are the same, their product is positive. And when the signs are different, then their product is negative. So 
when you take a negative number and you raise it to an exponent, whether or not there are parentheses around that negative number makes a huge difference. Because if there are parentheses around the negative number, that means that the negative and the number itself are both being kept together. Now, I will say we're going to get into this more when we get into order of operations, that the base of an exponent is only what is it to its immediate left. So for this first one here, for this negative 7 parentheses squared, the parentheses here indicate that both the negative and the 7 are being grouped together because that's what parentheses do. Parentheses group things together. So the parentheses here are indicating that the negative and the 7 are both being grouped together. And together they are being raised to the power 2. The fact that the exponent is outside the parentheses actually makes a huge difference because what it's indicating is that everything in the parentheses is all being raised to the second power. So because there are parentheses there, that means both the negative and the 7 are being multiplied by themselves two times. So you would write this as negative 7 times negative 7. Now a negative times a negative is a positive 49. That is very different than the next one. Without parentheses, the base of the exponent is only what's to its immediate left. So without the parentheses to group the negative and the 7 together, only the 7 is being squared and the negative is technically considered separate. So 7 squared is 49, but since the negative was separate, it is actually negative 49. So this is going to especially come into play when you are evaluating negatives and you're when you're taking a negative and you're squaring it or raising it to some other power on a calculator. You have to have parentheses there because the parentheses will group the negative together with its uh, it'll group the negative together and make sure that the negative is also being raised to that power. So for the next two, again, if the parentheses are there, that means the negative and the three are both being grouped together and both of them are being raised to the second power. So negative three parentheses squared is the same as negative three times negative three, which is positive nine. Now, if you don't have the parentheses there, that means only the 3 is being squared and the negative is technically separate, which gives you a negative 9. So be very careful of that little difference. If parentheses are there, make sure they stay there and everything that's in the parentheses is being grouped together. Speaking of parentheses, parentheses are an essential part in order of operations. So order of operations comes into play when you have an expression that has more than one mathematical operation, such as an expression that has both addition and division at, in the same expression. So there is a certain order in which all of the operations must be done. Now, I know in the past that many students have learned the acronym PEMDAS, which is fine. I have my own issues with it, but you know, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And if you know PEMDAS and you like PEMDAS and want to use it, I'm not stopping you from using it. The only thing with PEMDAS that I really have an issue with is that multiplication does not always come before division. And addition does not always come before subtraction. Multiplication and division are done at relatively the same time in whatever order they appear when you read the problem from left to right. Same thing with addition and subtraction. They're done at relatively the same time in the order that they appear when you read the expression from left to right. So if you want to use PEMDAS, just be careful that multiplication does not always come before division and addition does not always come before subtraction. I like to teach order of operation as a system of hierarchy. So uh, parentheses are not the only type of grouping symbols that we can have. We've already seen brackets. Brackets are basically the same thing as parentheses as are braces. So what I like to say is anything inside grouping symbols such as parentheses, brackets, or braces must be done first. Then after anything with, with a grouping symbol comes any exponents. We're not going to learn about radicals here, but when you do get to intermediate algebra and you learn about square roots and other radicals, they are going to be done at the same time as exponents. So exponents and radicals are done at the same time. 
And then comes multiplication and division. Now, multiplication and division are done at relatively the same time in the order that they appear when you read the problem from left to right. So division might come before multiplication. It depends on the expression. So just do them at relatively the same time in the order they appear when you read a problem from left to right. And then after that, the last thing you should be doing is addition and subtraction. Again, you're going to do these in the order that they appear when you read the expression from left to right. Now, I also want to make the disclaimer that with grouping symbols, if inside your grouping symbol you have more than one mathematical operation, the larger order of operations, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction are still going to hold. So even inside parentheses, order of operations still applies. So if inside your parentheses or brackets you have more than one operation, you do still need to follow order of operations. And if you have parentheses and side parentheses, then you're basically going to need to restart order of operations working from the outside and working your way in. Now, another thing is operations that are inside of a fraction. So remember, fractions are just another way of writing division. And remember, you can only divide two numbers at a time, one on the top, one on the bottom. That's how division works. It's only one integer, it's only one integer divided by another. So when division is written in fraction format, if you have any other operation, that is either on the top or the bottom of the fraction, there are going to be implied parentheses around that operation, even if they're not written. So you're going to see a lot of expressions like this. This 10, you know, 10 minus 2 in the numerator of a fraction divided by this 3 plus 1 in the denominator. You can only divide two numbers at a time. So before you do the division, you actually need to do these other operations that are inside the fraction. So even though there are no parentheses around this 10 minus 2, you can put parentheses around that 10 minus 2. Same thing with the 3 plus 1. There's no parentheses around them, so the parentheses are implied. So this implies that you need to do the 10 minus 2 first, which is going to be 8, divided by 3 plus 1, which is 4. And then once you have one number on the top and one number on the bottom, then you can divide them. So if you see any other mathematical operation, either on the top of a fraction or the bottom of a fraction, you must do these first before you do any dividing. Remember, you can only divide two numbers at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate each of these expressions without a calculator using order of operations. So another thing about parentheses is that parentheses are very often used to group negative numbers together, especially when they're being raised to some sort of power. This first order of operations bit right here, this grouping symbols, implies any operations that are inside grouping symbols, such as negative 2 times 4 inside parentheses. We don't really have that here, so even though we have parentheses, the parentheses here, their purpose is to just group this negative and the 3 together, so there's really nothing to do inside the parentheses. So since there's nothing to do inside the parentheses, we're going to move on to the next order of operations, which is exponents, and I see one. So with the parentheses there, that means the negative and the 3 are being grouped together, and both of them are being raised to the second power. So I'm going to do negative 3 to the second power, and anything that is not involved in this exponential, I am going to leave alone and leave where it is because I'm going to get to it later. So this 2 times, I'm not ready for multiplication yet, so I'm just going to leave it alone. And then negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Now that the exponent is done, now we can do this 2 times 9, which is 18, and then that will finish up, and the final answer is 18. So then we're going to move on to this next one over here on the top right. We have negative 4, and again, the parentheses are really here to just group the negative and the 4 together, and then we're multiplying it by 2 to the second power. So there's nothing to do inside the parentheses, but let's look at what other operations we have. We have multiplication, and we have an exponent. In order of operations, which of those goes first? Exponents come before multiplication. So I'm just going to leave this negative 4 and this times alone, and I'm going to do 2 to the second power, which is 2 times 2, which is 4. Then, once the exponent is done, then we can move on to the multiplication. So a negative 4 times a positive 4, negative times a positive is a negative 16. 
So then for this next one over here on the bottom left, let's just take a look through it and see what operations we have. We have a we have subtraction and we have division. In order of operations, what would go first? Division would go first. So we're going to do the division first. Now, what is on either side of the division sign, the numbers that are immediately on either side of it are what are being divided. And remember that a number always takes the sign to its left. So is this 8 negative or positive? This uh, 8 is negative. So what we're doing first is we are doing negative 8 divided by 2 first. I'm just going to leave this 4 alone. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm going to do negative 8 divided by 2. So a negative divided by a positive is a negative. Negative 8 divided by positive 2 is negative 4. And I've indicated that with that minus sign. Then we're going to do the subtraction. 4 minus 4 gives you 0. And then for the last one. So for the last one, I do notice that there are parentheses. And in the parentheses, I do see that there is an operation 12 minus 9. And then these other parentheses over here are just grouping the negative and the 2 together. So there's really nothing to do inside the second parenthesis, but there is absolutely something to do in the first one. So any operations that are inside parentheses need to be done first, which means anything that is not this 12 minus 9, I'm going to leave alone and leave exactly where it is. So I'm going to leave that 7 alone. 12 minus 9 is going to be 3. Now at this point, the parentheses are optional. Once you finish the operation that is inside the parentheses, you can get rid of them if you want to. You do just have to remember that there is implied multiplication. There's hidden multiplication between that 7 and that parentheses. So if you want to drop the parentheses, just replace it with the multiplication dot, just some way of indicating that this is 7 times 3 and not 73. But if you're worried, keep the parentheses. It indicates that this is 7 times 3. And then I'm just going to basically leave everything else alone because I'm going to get to it in the next step. So what comes after parentheses? After parentheses comes exponents. So this exponent, the base of this exponent with the parentheses there, the parentheses are grouping the negative and the 2 together. So the negative and the 2 are all being squared. So I'm going to leave the 7 times 3 alone. This minus sign that is outside the parentheses, I'm going to leave it there. And then I'm going to do negative 2 to the second power. So negative 2 to the second power is the same as negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. But since we had this minus sign that was outside the parentheses, it is still there. Now let's just quickly assess what operations we have. We have multiplication and then we have subtraction. In order of operations, which of those would go next? Multiplication comes before subtraction. So I'm going to do 7 times 3, which is 21. And then after the multiplication is done, now we get to subtract. So then 21, hold on, technical issues. All right, so then 21 minus 4 is going to give us 17. There we go. Now my stylus is working. Sorry about that. And then once you do the subtraction, that is going to be your final answer. So that's basically going to be the same thing with this group. So with this group, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to actually try these. I want you guys to uh, pause the video and simplify these without a calculator using order of operations. All right, so for this next one, sorry, my technology is kind of failing me today. We have subtraction, division, and addition. So which of those would come first? Well, division comes before any addition or subtraction, so we're going to do the division first. And remember, what is being divided are the numbers that are on either side of it, and a number always takes the sign to its immediate left. So what we're going to divide first is this negative 14 divided by 7, which means I'm going to leave that 20 where it is, 
and I'm going to leave that plus 1 where it is. So then a negative 14 divided by a positive 7 is a negative 2. And this is another instance where the Addition and subtraction are done in the order that they appear when you read the problem from left to right. So when you read the problem from left to right, the subtraction actually comes before the addition. So then 20 minus 2 is going to give you 18. We're going to do that subtraction first. And then we're going to do the addition 18 plus 1 is 19. So then looking at this next one over here on the top left, let's go through the operations that we have and figure out what would come first. So I have subtraction, I have multiplication, and I have division. So multiplication and division would come before subtraction, so we're going to do those first. Now multiplication and division are done in the order that they appear when you read the problem from left to right. So when you read this problem from left to right, the multiplication is going to come first before the division. And what we are multiplying are the numbers that are on either side of the multiplication symbol. So we're going to do this negative 6 times 3 first, which means I'm going to leave that outside 6 alone, and I'm going to leave the divided by 2 alone for now. So then negative 6 times positive 3 is going to give you a negative 18. Then I'm going to do the division, and again, what is being divided are the numbers that are on either side, and a number always takes the sign to its left. So next, we're going to do this negative 18 divided by 2, and I'm just going to leave that 6 alone. And then a negative divided by a positive is a negative 9. Then after that, now you're going to do the 6 minus 9, or 6 plus negative 9, whichever you want to think of it, which is going to give you negative 3. And then for this last one, we have a lot of different operations here. We have division, we have subtraction, we have an exponent, subtraction, and then another exponent. Inside the parentheses, there's really nothing to do since these parentheses are just keeping that negative two and the 2 together. So after parentheses would come exponents. So I'm going to tackle any expression that involves an exponent and anything that is not an exponent, I'm just going to leave alone for now. So I'm going to leave this 18 divided by 6 alone. Now notice that there are no parentheses here. Because there are no parentheses to group together the negative and the 3, that means that only the 3 is being squared, and that negative is considered separate. So I'm just going to leave that minus alone, and then 3 squared is 9, and then the minus was separate. Then there's another minus right here, but these parentheses are grouping this negative and this 2 together, which means both the negative and the 2 are both being squared. So then negative 2 squared is going to be negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. Then after exponents comes multiplication and division. I don't see any multiplication, but I do see division, and there is division right here, this 18 divided by 6. So I'm going to do 18 divided by 6 next, which is 3, and again, I'm just going to leave everything else alone. Then when you have more than one subtraction, it, order does matter, so you do have to do this in the order that it appears from left to right. So we're going to do 3 minus 9 first, or 3 plus negative 9, whichever, which is going to give you negative 6. Then we're going to do the minus 4, which again, you can either think of this as negative 6 minus 4, or negative 6 plus negative 4, whichever. In either case, you get negative 10. And we're going to do the same thing with this next one. So again, if at any point in this PowerPoint you do want to attempt a problem before I do it, even if I don't give you time to pause the video, just feel free to pause the video and then resume when you're done working and ready to check your answer. So in this next one, I'm going to do this next one with you because it does involve some parentheses. So I see subtraction, I see parentheses, so I'm going to immediately zoom in on those, and anything that is not involved in that parentheses, I'm going to leave alone. I'm not going to do anything with them, and I'm just going to leave them alone for right now. Inside the parentheses, luckily, we only have one operation, that's subtraction. So I'm going to do that 8 minus 5 first before anything else outside the parentheses. So I'm going to leave the 16, I'm going to leave the minus 5 alone. 
8 minus 5 is going to be 3. And I am going to leave the parentheses there because there is an exponent outside the parentheses. And there's implied multiplication between the 5 and the 3. And then we have divided by 3. Now remember, in order of operations, you have to always keep in mind what comes next. So we still have a lot of operations. We have subtraction, we have multiplication, we have an exponent, and we have division. Of those operations, what goes next? Exponents. So since exponents comes immediately after parentheses, we're going to do the exponents next. So this is the exponential expression right here. Anything that is not involved in this exponential expression, I'm going to leave alone and leave exactly where it is. So I'm going to leave this 16. I'm going to leave this minus alone. I'm going to leave the 5 alone. I am going to put a little multiplication indicator right here just to indicate that there is multiplication there. And then I'm also going to leave the divided by 3. And then 3 squared is the same as 3 times 3, which is 9. Now we're going to think about multiplication and division. So again, that subtraction we're going to have to do another time. Multiplication and division are done at relatively the same time in the order that they appear when you read the problem from left to right. So from left to right, this multiplication actually comes first. And the numbers that we are multiplying are what are on either side of it, and a number always takes the sign to its immediate left. So we're gonna, this is actually a negative 5 times positive 9. So I'm going to leave that 16 alone. I'm going to leave the divided by 3 alone. And then negative 5 times positive 9 is going to give us negative 45. Then after the multiplication, I do still see this division. So again, I'm just going to leave the 16 where it is. We're going to have to deal with it later. A number always takes the sign to its left. So this is going to be negative 45 divided by 3, which is negative 15. Then after the division, now you can do the subtraction. 16 minus 15 is 1. So your final answer is equal to 1. Now, I did make the disclaimer several slides ago that even inside grouping symbols, if there are more than one operation inside grouping symbols, you do still need to follow order of operations inside parentheses or brackets. So the moment that you see parentheses or brackets, you basically need to mentally restart order of operations to say, okay, I've got more than one operation in these brackets. Let's restart order of operations. What goes first? So immediately upon reading this, I, the first thing I notice is that there are brackets. These are the first, when you read it from left to right, these brackets are the first grouping symbols that you come across. But even inside those brackets, there are, there's more than one operation. So even inside the brackets, we need to keep in mind, we need to still follow order of operations. So I want you guys to just ignore this negative 3 squared plus 6 for a moment. I can't, you know, obviously cover it, but if I, you know, cover it with your, cover it with your hand or something. We're going to ignore it. We're going to leave it alone. We're going to deal with it later. Inside the brackets, let's look at the operations that we have. We have division and we have parentheses. In order of operations, what always goes first? Parentheses. So even inside these larger grouping symbols, we needed to reset order of operations and we needed to do parentheses first. So I'm going to do that 6 minus 10 first and anything that is not involved with that 6 minus 10, I'm going to leave alone and I'm going to leave exactly where it is. So I'm going to leave that negative 3 squared plus 6 brackets 12 divided by and this outer bracket, I'm going to leave it all alone. And then 6 minus 10 or 6 plus negative 10, whichever is going to give you negative 4. And again, are we done with the brackets? We are not done with the brackets. We finished the parentheses, which is why you can drop the parentheses if you want. But since we haven't done all of the operations in the brackets, we still have the brackets there. And we need to actually finish what's inside the brackets. So inside the brackets, I'm going to do this 12 divided by negative 4. And again, anything that is not involved in the brackets needs to be left alone. So then positive 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. Now, you can leave the brackets there if you want. Just remember that there is multiplication here. So either leave the brackets there to indicate that there's multiplication or drop them and replace it with the multiplication dot, whichever. But you do need to indicate somehow that there is multiplication between that 6 and that negative 3. 
All right, so now that the grouping symbols are finally done, after parentheses, what comes next? Exponents come after grouping symbols. And I see a, parent I see a exponent right there. Now remember, there is no parentheses around the negative and the 3, which means the negative is not being squared. Only the 3 is being squared. So without parentheses, this negative 3 squared is negative 9. After exponents, what comes next? So let's take a look at what we have. We have this negative 9, we have addition, and then we have multiplication. So after exponents comes the multiplication. So I'm just going to leave this negative 9 alone. And then we have positive 6 times negative 3. A positive times a negative is a negative 18. Now, after multiplication, now we can do the subtraction, or you can think of it as adding a negative if you want to, because remember, subtraction is the same as adding a negative, so whichever. A negative 9 plus a negative 18, a negative plus a negative is a negative, 9 plus 18 is 27. So your final answer is equal to 20, uh, negative 27. So we're going to do each of these, again, without a calculator. So I want you guys to try this next one over here on the left. This is another instance where even inside parentheses, there's more than one operation. So remember, even inside parentheses, order of operations still applies. So I want you guys to go ahead and pause the video and attempt this one here on the left. And if you're feeling adventurous, try the one on the right too, and then resume when you are done working. All right, so for this next one, the first thing I see are parentheses. So I'm just going to zoom in on parentheses, kind of ignore everything that's not in parentheses. I mean, don't get rid of it, but just ignore it for right now. Even inside parentheses, we have addition and an exponent. Which of those goes first in order of operations? Exponents come before addition. So I'm going to leave this 8 plus alone, and I'm going to do that exponent first. So that 3 squared is 9. Then I'm still not done with the parentheses yet. So again, I'm just going to leave this 3 plus 2 times, and then I'm going to do 8, 8 plus 9 to finish up the parentheses. So then 8 plus 9 is going to give me 17. Now at this point, if you're done with the parentheses, you can drop them because, you know, again, I indicated the multiplication with a dot, or you could just leave the parentheses to indicate the 2 times 17, whichever. However, at this point, we have all of the grouping symbols are done, so we have addition and multiplication. So in order of operations, which of those goes first? Multiplication comes before addition. So I'm going to multiply this positive 2 times 17, which is going to be a positive 34. Then after the multiplication, now we're going to add 3 plus 34 is 37, and that is going to be your final answer. All right, so then for this next one, I see a lot going on here, so let's just kind of see what we have. We have multiplication, we have an exponent, we have subtraction. Remember, fractions are the same as division, so that you can think of this as division as well. But on, to on the top of that fraction, I have 21 minus 11. Remember, you can only divide two numbers at a time. And I mentioned a few slides ago that when you have any op other operation, either on the top or the bottom of a fraction, you need to do those operations first before any dividing happens. So even though at first glance on this problem, I don't see parentheses, there are parentheses that are implied around this 21 minus 11. So I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around that 21 minus 11 because that actually has to be done first. So I'm just going to leave everything else alone. And I'm going to do that 21 minus 11, which is 10. Now that the parentheses are done, what comes after parentheses? Exponents come after parentheses, and I see an exponential right here. So I'm going to do this 2 to the third power next. So I'm going to leave that 6 alone. I'm going to leave the times alone. 2 to the third power is the same as 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 
After exponents comes multiplication and division. And again, remember that multiplication and division are done at relatively the same time in the order that they appear when you read the problem from left to right. So when I read it from left to right, I do see that the multiplication goes first. So I'm going to do that first. So six, positive 6 times positive 8 is positive 48. Then I'm going to do the 10 divided by 2 next, or you could think of this as negative 10 divided by 2, whichever. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and then we have that minus there. Then to finish it up, after the division, now you can subtract. So 48 minus 5 is 43, and that is then going to be your final answer. So then for this last one, this is probably going to be, you know, probably the hardest order of operations type of problem that you will see. So this involves a lot of, there's a lot of different operations that are all going on, even within grouping symbols. So the first thing that you notice is that we have a lot of grouping symbols. We have both brackets and parentheses. So when you read the problem from left to right, the first thing that you run across are these brackets. And remember, even inside brackets, the larger order of operations still applies. So let's take a look at what we have inside the brackets. Inside the brackets, we have multiplication, subtraction, and parentheses. So parentheses always goes first. So I see parentheses. I'm going to zoom in on those first. So I'm going to focus on these parentheses. Now, remember, the moment that you see any sort of parentheses or brackets, you need to mentally reset and restart order of operations. So I'm going to focus on only those parentheses, and I'm going to mentally restart order of operations, especially since inside those parentheses, I have more than one operation. I have both subtraction and an exponent. So just focusing on what's in parentheses, what would go first, the subtraction or the exponent? The exponent would go first. So I'm going to do this 3 squared first. And since there are no parentheses around the minus and the 3, only the 3 is being squared. And this subtraction is technically separate. So anything that is not that 3 squared, I'm just going to leave alone and leave exactly where it is. And then 3 squared is the same as 3 times 3, which is 9. Now, I'm not done with the parentheses yet. I just did the exponent. So after the exponent inside this parentheses, I'm now going to finish up the parentheses by doing the subtraction. So I have 5 times brackets 4 times 10 minus 9 is 1. And remember, you can drop the uh, parentheses if you want to. You just have to indicate that this is 4 times 1 and not 41, but whichever. Now remember, I just finished up the parentheses. Have I completed gr all of the grouping symbols yet? I do still have grouping symbols. I do still have these brackets. Just inside the brackets, I finished up the parentheses. So now, let's take a look at what we have left inside these brackets. I have multiplication and I have subtraction. In order of operations, which one of those would go first? Multiplication would come before subtraction. So I'm going to do this 4 times 1 first, which is 4. Then I'm going to finish up what's inside the brackets by now doing the subtraction. 4 minus 2 is 2. And again, once you have completed everything inside the grouping symbols, you can drop the grouping symbols or if you want, or you can leave them there. It doesn't really matter. And now that the grouping symbols are finally done, now we can tackle this five times, which was outside the brackets. Five times two gives you 10 as a final answer. Now here's an application of why order of operations is so important. You might remember that a little while ago and a couple videos ago, we covered formulas. Formulas are, a equa are equations that relate to or more real life variables. And when you are evaluating an a formula at a particular value, if that formula involves more than one operation, you need to follow order of operations when you simplify it. 
For example, the recommended dose in tyl of Tylenol in milligrams for a child who is eight years old is calculated by a formula. So the child's age was plugged in here and here. Most uh, Tylenol, you know, Tylenol extra strength tablets are about 500 milligrams a piece. And you don't want to give a child that is under 12 the full dose of Tylenol. That's not safe for them. So the dose, the dosage of a medicine for a child under 12, you should always consult the doctor. Please always consult uh, your child's physician before giving any sort of adult medication such as Tylenol to a child. So please don't take this as, you know, please always consult your doctor before, per, before giving your child any sort of medication. But... Let's follow order of operations for this formula to find the recommended dose for this Tylenol. Now, this fraction bar here can also be read as division. And you might remember you can only divide two numbers at a time. And you might also remember that any time that you see more uh, any other operation, either in the top of a fraction or the bottom of a fraction, you must always do those first. So even though there are no parentheses here, there are implied parentheses around the 8 times 500 and the 8 plus 12. So I'm going to follow order of operations and do that the... Uh, multiplication and that addition first, what's in parentheses. So then eight times 500 is going to be 4,000 divided by eight plus 12, which is 20. So then 4,000 divided by 20 will give you 200, and that is going to be in milligrams. Now, I know that you guys, you know, you have a calculator for this class. You're, you're, it is a course requirement. If you were to just type this in exactly as you saw it, 8 times 500 divided by 8 plus 12 without the parentheses, you would notice that you don't get 200 milligrams. So here's the thing. Calculators are only as good as the user input. If you don't input the you know, if you don't input things correctly into the calculator, the calculator is going to give you the wrong answer because it's only going to do what you tell it. So especially in a case like this, you would have to remember order of operations. You would have to remember that even though you didn't see parentheses here, you would have to put parentheses here in order for the calculator to do order of operations correctly. So if you wanted to just plug all this into a calculator, you would have to put parentheses around both the numerator and the denominator. So just keep that in mind that the calculator won't always give you the correct answer, especially if you input it incorrectly. So just be very careful of that. And remember, my disclaimer is that, you know, don't give your child any sort of medication without first consulting their physician. Don't use this video as medical advice. Please, please don't use this video as medical advice. All right, so that is going to be it for uh, order of operations. And we're not completely done with these two sections yet, so we're not done with section 7, 7, and 7, 8 yet. We are, there is going to be a part two to this and a part three, so stay tuned for that. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video when we start introducing variables once again. So thank you all very much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.